Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 21 of the Operation Redwood podcast. Real quick, before we get started, I just want to remind you guys of this event that we are praying for this year in 2024. Um, the initial vision was something big and massive, and we were talking to these big venues. Um, but the more I, I think and pray about it, I, I feel like something smaller and intimate makes more sense, at least right now. Um, so that way we can really can really build a stronger more intimate bonds with uh, the men that show up for this event so make sure that you guys are signed up for the um the newsletter because we're going to communicate a lot of the details through email um so whoever is interested in this event uh, we don't again i would give you as much information right now as i could all i know is it's going to be in illinois i don't have any costs i don't have any timelines just yet um uh, if it's going to be a one-day thing a two-day thing you'll know as soon as we get that stuff squared away but trust me we are working on that day and night um in the background here while producing these podcasts for you guys so um i would love for you to be there make sure you're signed up to the newsletter because that's where we're really going to launch more of this content so before we get started in the episode i just want to make sure that you guys know where our hearts are at and like i said before if you guys want to support we would really appreciate it head over to operationredwood.org click on donate when you can give a monthly or a one-time gift uh, we would really appreciate it and a lot of that is going to help set this event up so thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you guys. Enjoy the episode. We'll see you guys later. Thanks. So I guess a question for the table. How do you know if you're acting in accordance with God's will? Mm. Right, because at times we experience, you know, the, the ease of flow. But then I've, I've heard, you know, if, um, if your actions don't end up receiving some kind of, you know, backlash, like if you will. Validation um, or? No, not necessarily. So... Uh, if you're acting in, you know, accordance with what the devil has, you know, then why would there be any resistance, mm. right? You're, you're just going to keep flowing. But if you're acting in accordance with what God has planned for you, then you start encountering, you know, these Ooh, these barriers to go about entering really into stuff, you know. So I, I've heard that, but mm. how do you know when you're acting in accordance with God's will? Of course, you're reading the Bible and such, yeah, and, you yeah, know. Yeah. For me, it's that. It's when I'm reading the Bible and I feel like, it's really aligning with, I feel that the direction I'm being taken to. Mm. And that's kind of how I base it. And then I ask you, mm. then I ask you. Mm. Like, mm. Literally, that's all my process. Yeah. I mean, I'm so afraid of Brian about this. And then Samuel's another person that I'll ask. Like someone who, people who I feel like are more spiritually like grounded than mm. I am. And I'm okay to admit that, right? I don't I don't see any wrong in that. But that's where I try to run my my thought process because if it's only angelo thinking and trying to make decisions off mm -hmm. of my filter i know i'm limited so i have to ask men like you guys like what do you guys think mm -hmm. like straight up the event that we're we're planning for next year I had a conversation with this guy i'm like what do you really think mm -hmm. he gave me his thoughts and i'm like yeah like these are things i i, I also have to think about and consider as well mm -hmm. you know so i feel like god speaks to me through you guys through the books that i that I read, the quiet time that I have with him, and really being intentional about seeking him first mm. is how I feel. I, I get that. So then do you move in like the absence of guidance, I guess? Because at times, I, I know that we feel like a conviction, right? Yeah. Where you, you say something, and then it's like, man, everything is just aligning to make this thing happen. Yeah. But then like sometimes you don't hear anything, and then you're, you're just waiting. Yeah. Do, do you go about taking action in those moments or do you just pause for even longer? I think that as long as there was an initial plan, I feel like you work the plan mm. and you just keep doing that until you get something else. Mm. Because if you stop, then everything kind of just stops. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was this podcast. Mm. Like I told you guys about that dream where everything had burned down. Mm -hmm. And then all the my accolades and accomplishments on my on the office walls were gone. Mm -hmm. and the only thing left on my desk was my or in the in my office was my desk and my laptop. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, I was seeking like, what does that mean, God? Mm -hmm. Like this was such an in depth dream. And you know, fast forward, fast forward, the podcast mm -hmm. comes out. Then I'm like, okay, then we'll do the podcast. And we just keep doing that every week. We we try, you know, we get the equipment. We you know stay committed. We but you keep doing that until I get something else. Then at one point I'm like, God, 
is this it? Like, what are we mm. doing? Like, is this it? Like, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. You know, am I doing something wrong? Am I do, not doing enough? Should I do more? I'm not, I'm, you know, and I'm like, kind of like looking up, like, what, 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 what? Yeah. Give me a sign. Uh, give me a sign, yeah. right? And, and then I, I get to that, I'm like, okay, if 2024 could be the best year ever, what's that one thing that, sh- that, that would happen that would make 2024 be awesome? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, okay. And that's where I feel like that idea of this, this event was planted. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just went with it. Yeah. Until I hear otherwise, hmm. right? Then, then that's. But I like what you said though. If it's too easy, like that, was it the devil is? Is that what? It, well, if it's too smooth, <coughs> essentially, yeah. the devil's kind of letting it go. Like it, it, the devil has a hand in there or something like that. Right? Potentially, so, yeah. ish. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, like, but just, just even whether that be true or false, mm. it's like a, it's, it's something to chew on. Yeah, you know. And I'm like, hmm. Mm. Because for me, honestly, this planning this event it has been a real struggle. Mm-hmm. I feel like God, if you gave me this vision, if you gave me this, why isn't it easier? Mm-hmm. Why does it feel so heavy? Yeah, like there's times where it feels like, yeah, this is it. I feel like we got that validation. Like this is this, God. This is what you want me to do. Mm-hmm. And then there's times where I'm like, the last couple of days, I'm like. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> what am I doing right. here, God? Who does? Right. Who does know what You know what doing? I mean? Like, and, and that's just, I don't know. I don't know if that answered your question, but that's just where my process is in my mind right now. No, I got you. So for me, the, the first thing that I would have to check, right, is am I living in some sort of sin, mm-hmm. right? Because the first step is of doing, living under God's will, right, is have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. First box you have to check. All right, check. Um, am I trying, do I know God, right? Can anyone kind of shake my my faith, mm-hmm. right? Yes or no. Oh, like make you think otherwise? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes or no. No, no one can shake my faith. Why? Because I've had these experiences that no one can take from me because I've, I've seen things, because I've experienced things, because things have happened uh, at, at such a, a level of perfection in my life mm. in the middle of the chaos you know it, it's it kind of makes no sense but once once you've lived it once you've had that experience for yourself no one's going to take that away from you it's like no i i was there i mm-hmm. lived it there's Absolutely. no no one can take that from you mm-hmm. okay check um so now that you you're grounded in your faith and now, are you are you trying to seek God? Are you trying to get to know Him further? Are you? Do you what are your spiritual aspirations? Right. Mm-hmm. Like the first thing is, I I don't want to go to hell. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you get to know this man, and then you start to fall in love with this man, and then you realize how amazing this man is. But show me more. There's more. God is an infinite God. He'll He can show you every. He can show you something new every day. Mm. Right. Here on earth, imagine in heaven, mm. right? So we have infinity in our hearts. And you mentioned something about uh, being um, content, right? Mm. And so there's I, there, there's two sides to that. One is being content physically, right? Um, I believe that God uh, gave, d- didn't intend us to be idle. So mm-hmm. we should always be working towards something or mm-hmm. for something, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when we do that, we develop a skill, right? We work on our gifts. We have relations with people, which is really the only thing that we're going to have in heaven anyways, right? Mm-hmm. That we can't take anything from this earth except the relationships that we've had with the people that we shared mm-hmm. this life with. Um, so physically, don't be idle, right? Do something, you know? Like you're, you're back in school, you know, mm-hmm. which I think is phenomenal. I hate school, right? That's not for me. Mm-hmm. Well, I would. I love developing my skills. Um, you know, camping. You know, guns. Um, physically working out, martial arts, whatever. Um, now, spiritually, we are spiritually our lives. That spiritual life is supposed to feed into our physical life, and mm-hmm. spiritually, we are to be filled by God's grace. Mm-hmm. His grace is enough, right? Scripture says. Um, let my grace be enough, right? Be it, 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 it is, it is enough for you, right? Enough means so many different things, but it means to be filled. 
It means to be content. Mm. It means that you're no longer hungry. You're no longer yearning for anything. It's you are happy where you're at. And that doesn't mean you're going to stop seeking God, right? We're, we have to be in constant communication with God. And the whole point of this of this journey that we call the Bible is to get back to the Eden, right? To have that same relationship that Adam and Eve had before the before they committed sin was to walk with God, right? That tells me that they weren't ashamed, they weren't afraid, mm. right? That happened as a result of sin. Mm -hmm. So if you're, and that doesn't mean that you're holy either, right? Because otherwise Jesus would have would have not come. You know, you if you think you're high and mighty, and if you think you're righteous, and you think that you're the hottest thing since sliced bread, then you you should have been on that cross, mm. not Jesus, mm. right? And so that doesn't mean we're not going to fall, but that means that when we do fall, we're going to immediately seek forgiveness. Mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. only one that can forgive our sins, which is God. And obviously, if we wrong somebody here on earth, you know, make peace with them. Um, but um, so as you have peace and you are filled and you are content, right, with grace, you have had enough, you know, you are firmly, firmly placed in your faith in Jesus Christ, the Father and the Holy Spirit, and you are not being idle, and you are working towards something, you are not in sin, and you are in constant communication with God, then you're just naturally going to say, oh, God, you know, this is on my heart. I want to do X, Y, Z. What do you think about that? You know, is this correct? Is, uh, is this coming from a right place? You know, is this going to help me later down the line, or is it going to lead me astray? Hmm. Right? Like I've said this before, some people are not meant to be rich. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, mm -hmm. God wants us to be comfortable he wants us to be satisfied he wants us to be happy and honestly he does want you to be rich right um but some people can't handle that yet because of their character mm -hmm. and they'll spend mm -hmm. it all all their money on strippers and blow you know mm -hmm. and they'll put themselves into an early grave right yeah. or maybe they don't know how to manage that money and it'll just uh cause division in the family or what have you you know mm -hmm. there's so many things that can go wrong with money just look at people that uh, become instant millionaires right. with the lottery. You know, right. they call it the curse of the lottery. Um, so what does it mean to to be doing God's will? That's mm. personal between you and God, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't be idle. And just like you run things by God, I think we should all be doing that, you mm -hmm. know. And God will bless the work from your hand, you mm. know. And just like we said, the our... our gifts are not for us you know what benefit is it for an apple tree to make apples mm. it's not for the benefit of the tree it's for us mm. Ooh. exactly okay yeah, the words of brian filthy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yo telling you man so hey. both of you were tapping on you know just being in constant communication with god you know mm. throughout your process um what's how yours? exactly what's up what's your what's your process Still working through it, man. Mm. Absolutely. So, um, you know, of course, prayer. And then continue just making some kind of movement, yeah. right? Yeah. And it tends to be that um, as long as I stay focused on, you know, whatever my goal is, things just continue to add up, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, man, God, please let me do at least decent on this test. Like, mm -hmm. All right, I got to be. All right, from here, what do I do? And then you just continue on. You know, and then step by step, you start chipping away, um, and the goal eventually is up obtained. Yeah. Right? But then that, that goes back to that, you know, contentment for me. I'm never just content with where I am. You know, I always want to be building up to that next step. Right. And, you know, at times, um, when I take a step back and, you know, I'm evaluating that situation, it's almost like, it, it feels like the curse, right? And it's mm. it's almost ungodly right because you're supposed to be able to be content in certain situations where you know in the bible it talks about um people that are born eunuchs and people that are made eunuchs what's right? a eunuch uh, people that were essentially castrated oh um, okay yeah so uh, the slaves that way they couldn't go about having you know ill thoughts and whatnot whenever they're tending to the the, the king's spouse the you know yeah, yeah. Oh, um, so dang. the people that were made you know eunuchs so there was a gentleman, I forget his name off the top of my head, right? But he was, I forget if he was made or born a eunuch. I think that he was made a eunuch. Um, so he couldn't father children. And then uh, that was one of his dreams to be able to father children. 
he was uh, working in the palace and then um, as a result of his position, he was able to go about mentoring, you know, people that were coming through the palace and such. And those ended up being like his spiritual children. Mm. Right. So he couldn't bear, uh, you know, physical children. But spiritually, he was going about being able to mentor these individuals and bringing them up, you know, through the process and yeah, such. Yeah. Um, so then he ended up being a father in that fashion. Wow. Um, you know, so it's it's amazing. But at the same time, it it talks about that in the Bible. I didn't have to find the verse, but you know, um, the person that can find contentment in that situation um, quickly ends up, you know, getting a lot of, I guess, that load, you know, lifted from them. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, so in that fashion, you know, I guess I, I fall into the American dream curse where it's like, man, I'm always seeking something better. And, you know, when I get to the better, it's like, man, there has to be something more than this. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, for so sure. I get that. For I, sure. I always want, you know, that next step and I'm not sure, you know, where it goes it's about stopping. Mm. Because, you know, you, you have the, the neurosurgeon that, you know, wants to cure, you know, whatever disease and. Who knows? Maybe if they never cure that disease, then you know they're they're never happy. Mm -hmm. You know, so you've attained you know all this the status and such, and you know you've been able to give somebody movement back in their legs, so on and so forth. Um, but then, just because you weren't able to cure that one disease that you truly sought to you know cure, now your whole life was meaningless in your own eyes. You know, and I guess that's my fear. I, um, I think that goes hand in hand with what we we're just talking about. A battle to fight and an adventure to live. Yeah, exactly. It's it's where's the thrill? Where's the risk? Where's exactly. the bigger concept beyond just me? Exactly. You know. You know. So that American dream totally falls into that. Yeah, man. And um, I guess that the issue for me, you know, is you have this dream that you set out to go about accomplishing. You accomplish it, and then you you seek to accomplish the next one. Um, but when do you stop dreaming? And like, hey, this is just my reality. This is who I am. You know, are we meant to continue dreaming or does it ever get to that point where you're supposed to just be, you know, content with where you are in life, you know? And I, I think that, which is why I brought up the shepherds earlier, um, in the older days where, you know, you had just these individuals that were working a farm and such and, you know, just tending animals and such like this, this is life, you know, this, mm -hmm. this is the good life. Mm -hmm. I'm able to go about providing for my family, so on and so forth. But then when you, you live in the society that, is constantly demanding more of you. You're, you're forced to go about performing, you know. You're, you're one of the monkeys in the circus or not, mm. you know, the, the director of it type deal. Um, life never stops. Mm. You know, it just keeps moving. No matter what it is that you want to do, it, it's going to keep going. I think that's where, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I think that's where, um, that's where, it, it, that's where the, the question should be asked, who's asking you to perform? If you're still being... Because society is telling me to perform, then mm -hmm. that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. But if it's like a really God-given dream, and it's like a self-like initiated, like you're not self-initiated, but it's like um, whose standards, right? If if we're going by based off what we see society doing, or based off like I really feel this calling to this, you know, I think you can keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I think. If God is giving this dream, if He's planted his bigger vision once you get close to that or once you accomplish that there's going to be a next step but i don't feel it'll like it'll be like daunting like oh god again yeah. you know but i'm like oh yeah i'll be I'm, I'm excited for that yeah you know in a set like there's going to be ups and downs right but that's a, i like it. right when you said that like you know when society is doing something I'm like maybe, maybe that's it is society making me feel like i have to perform mm -hmm. or do i really feel like i want to this see and i guess that's where it kind of comes in for me man because mm. in the in the society that we live in if you're sitting idle like you could have a, a phenomenal job it's like, oh okay so what are you doing now you know it's like well i'm just doing my job mm -hmm. oh okay and you're kind of like <laughs> looked down upon you know very well you know you're kind of looked down upon you know just for doing the thing that you might be comfortable doing mm -hmm. Um, well, you know, you got so much more that you could offer. People are always going to tell you that, you know, you have so much more that you could be doing. Why don't you, you know, go about doing this? I like where I'm at, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. people are always going to want more from you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's tough. Yeah. No, aside from other people, I think that, first of all, the concept of contentment only is within yourself. So no one else really matters, right? Mm. I guess what is difficult is 
when you're feeling content, is that the same thing as you already accomplished your calling? And then there's another thing of what should I be doing and is that a calling? And then there's this other, you were talking about American dream, the curse of the American dream and always wanting more. It kind of battles this whole idea of entrepreneurship because that's all that you want to do. If right. you don't do more, you're never going to get anywhere. So mm -hmm. that's where society classifies that. So it's kind of hard to differentiate a calling and wanting to do something and having a goal based on that versus this is my goal. And um, for everyone who knows me, I know Angela knows this part of me. I'm very strategic, tactical. Everything has to be a list and uh, look at all the pros and cons of everything. Write everything out. And um, if you don't know something or don't have a skill set, learn it, perfect it, be a master at it. Mm -hmm. And I guess the hardest part with that is there are times when I can't read about something or I don't have the knowledge or intelligence about something. And I guess that's where you were talking about moving the absence of guidance. Mm -hmm. So that's something new to me. And mm -hmm. that's where I realize that God's wisdom is kind of making me okay. That's where it's coming from. And it's filling in that space of my lack of wisdom, mm -hmm. you know? Can I, can I, is it okay if we dig a little into sure, that? Sure, sure. Because I love where you're at personally in your walk. I think it's so cool to watch God like kind of reach out to you in these different senses mm -hmm. and that you're at the point that you're not just seeing things as coincidence anymore that you're like, yo, that's a God thing. Yeah. And I love it that, that you're going through that right now. But if I can ask you, uh, if you, if you don't mind sharing, like, wh where are you at with that? Like with, you know, not being okay understanding everything right now mm -hmm. because like what we were talking about before there's so many things that you want to understand you want to learn and have it in a box and fully get it mm -hmm. but god is not able to be put into a box exactly. like how, how are you sitting with that right now so it's very different you know with everything i've ever done with school with learning understanding reading being able to you know offer my knowledge to people and teaching there's this place where you don't feel content there's this place of discomfort and uneasiness for me where it's like I should know this when am I going to experience something when am I going to learn who am I going to meet that's going to teach me about this mm. and it's almost unsettling and now that I understand to some degree that there's something more that kind of uh, puts me at peace and at ease realizing that aside from coincidence like there's uh, everything is purposeful Mm -hmm. You know, like everything we do is purposeful, everything that's around us. But I guess the best way to put it in short, and I know it's a long conversation with, with, yeah, with yeah, your yeah. question, it's more a matter of you're kind of gaining truth outside of yourself, but it's for you. Mm. You know, just being able to, it's one thing to have knowledge and intelligence and wisdom and apply it. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. and Scientific have it. method. And yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how my brain is. But to have some type of answer that gives you clarity and peace beyond the science, beyond the mm. procedure that I always used to follow, yeah. you know, and uh, it's very different for me. And I, it's starting to make sense. Like the, the truths are starting to come out. Like mm -hmm. certain things that That's happen cool. are more, uh, they're just more clear. And I think a lot of it turns into or is because I'm more open about viewing certain things. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, if someone's not open to faith or religion or even someone's theory about something, mm -hmm. they're not going to understand anything. You yeah, know, exactly. they're, they're stuck in their ways, mm -hmm. and which is part of the reason why I won't talk to certain people because I know no matter how much explaining of a certain thing, if they view something a certain way, it'll always be that way. Mm -hmm. But if everything is just within yourself, you learn truths about yourself and about what's coming to you. So mm. you still have to break it down scientifically, or at least I do, but at the same time, this gap in understanding is filled, mm. you know, or slowly becoming filled. Because mm. I used to be a wreck if I didn't understand something. I mean, you know, like I work on cars, you work on planes, just the ability to know how everything works had to be a thing, but you realize that it's, that infinite wisdom that someone else has or that God has is something that's far beyond uh, what we can understand. Mm. 
It's but okay not to know. It's okay not to know, but it's okay to understand that that's what that is. That's what that gap is. That's mm. slowly being understood over time and over understanding and through experiences with people like you guys, you know? Like, it's it's fascinating. It's, yeah. I can't even, I don't even have a word for it. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, so just, I guess, becoming comfortable with going against the norm, man, because mm -hmm. I guess in, um, in my job right now, especially, you know, we, we go about doing things just because, you know, that's the way that we've always done it. Mm -hmm. So, well, why? That doesn't make any sense. You know, let, let's change it up. That We can make this process a lot easier. Mm. You know, it, it might be, you know, grueling in, you know, the first couple months or whatever. But after we go about implementing whatever steps, it becomes a lot easier. Uh, and I think that that's the way that I try to go about doing life, man. Mm -hmm. In all honesty, I, I like to do the things that make me uncomfortable. Yes. Um, and then, you know, see the comfort starting to build. And then as soon as I start feeling comfortable again, I got to put myself into one of those situations that I'm uncomfortable in. Yeah. You know. That's Although, definitely a pattern. I see that. Yeah, man. So um, that I guess that's the way that I end up going about living life. And I, I don't always do it, you know, intentionally. You know, I guess it's just as a, a matter of, you know, the person that I am. I've never liked to feel comfortable just because I feel like as soon as you feel that comfort, the rug gets pulled out from underneath you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then it's like, dude, what am I supposed to do now? You know? <laughs> just yeah, like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> see? See? Look, I got comfortable. I got comfortable. This is why I make like, myself uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, but it's like, you know, what, what am I supposed to do now? And I, I don't like being in those situations where it's like, dude, I, I have no idea how to go about doing this thing called life. Mm. And I, I guess that's just part of being human, mm -hmm. right? I think it's part of being a man. Specific. Yeah, I mean, human, yes, but a man, like again, we go back. We need to fight a battle. We mm. need to be like I get like that's what I feel like. He just continues. At least for me, he keeps clicking back to a battle, a battle to fight, and an adventure to live. Mm. Like there needs to be that risk. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I did the whole supplement thing, the entrepreneurship, I was like, it's cool, it's stressful, but it's not like someone's gonna stab me in the next stressful. Yeah, you know, yeah, like protein. looking. Yeah, <laughs> maybe <laughs> I don't know. Um, I want the protein. <laughs> uh, you know, it was never like someone looking into the eyes of someone that wants to take your life, that knows nothing about you, no, doesn't know about, you know, you're actually a good dude, you're kind of funny, like mm -hmm. you got a family. He knows nothing about you, but he's going to try to take your life. Yeah. Why? Yeah. That's, you know, that, like, and maybe it's a little crazy but like i miss that you know <laughs> that risk of like i, I might that rush yeah that rush yeah that rush yeah and i'm like i tried to find that in in in, in business and entrepreneurship i'm like oh it's a rush to this business deal and then we agree and we sign a piece of paper and then like oh that was it <laughs> are we gonna wrestle now exactly <laughs> like, maybe that's the reason for the third um uh point and that's to do it for someone else, right? To find mm. that beauty that you need to save. Because you can do the first two for yourself. Yeah. And at some point, you're going to be like, ah, what's the point? Yes. But then if you could do it for somebody else outside of yourself, then you're just like, okay, yeah. I'm doing it for them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's beautiful. Let's that's see. beautiful. That's beautiful. And so I, I guess I would be curious, like, what people would recommend to us in getting, you know, involved in that, that kid space. Because I know that um, mm. you have a buddy. Mm -hmm. You know, that, you know, is actively fighting against, you know, sex trafficking and such. Shout out Matt. Yeah, you know, watch this. And I'm going to send this to him. He's going to be on, uh, he's already agreed to, er, he want, he's down to speak at the event or show up and yeah, man. do his thing. Because that that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to support these organizations that are actually fighting traffickers. Mm -hmm. Like, actively out there, boots on the ground, doing stuff. I'd love to be part of that gunfight, man. Absolutely. I'd love to be part of that. That's, yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's hard because, like, in, in Illinois, we're so blue. Yeah. And he said it, too. He's like, it's hard to get out there. Like, it, they've been trying to come out here. Um, it's a challenge. Mm. It's but, not even Illinois. That's the annoying part. You go right outside Chicago, Cook County, everybody's red. Exactly. You know, mm. yeah. everyone's way more conservative. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's mm. true. Because everything else, think about it, it's, it's just farmland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's just you, Chicago. But that th these are the battles that we're choosing to fight. You know, real, real issues the world, in a sense, kind of has turned a blind eye to. Yeah, man. You know, and, and that's, what, that's what gets me excited all over again. Yeah. You know, like... The, Oh, we'll wrap it up soon. But the other day, yesterday, 
So we've been we've been working out with uh with uh what do you play uh, play carriers the play carriers nice. like like tactical play carriers putting on weight and it's been like dude it's it's brutal punishing me yeah, absolutely. punishing me because I'm like I'm not like back in my twenties trying out for SWAT physical you know what I mean mm-hmm. physical shape anymore and I'm trying to act like it but I'm like I'm hurting um and. Wait, what was my point? <laughs> I don't know. No, Mine's no. got steel plates, though. <laughs> so mine's are super heavy. My ankle's well, not at 20-something pounds. Well, we were, oh, yeah, okay. So we were training in that. So my body's taking this beating. And the other day, I'm like, dude, I'm really sore. I'm like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm actually more achy. This is more painful than it is, like, sore. Hmm. And then I see this video of, um, you know, T- Tim Tebow's also one of the people that are fighting traffickers, and he, re- he re- him and his wife read this letter of this girl that they saved in the Philippines of her, and they read this letter, and, and they read this letter that this girl wrote to them. And dude, it just broke my heart that this little girl had to go through that. And as achy as I was, like, I'm like wobbling achy. I'm like, F this, I'm going to go work out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I just had, like I was just recharged again. Yeah. And it wasn't a physical thing because my muscles were still as sore as they were five minutes before I watched that video. But my soul and my spirit was quenched. Mm-hmm. That regardless of the pain or discomfort, you know, people would be like, "Oh well, you know, overtraining or whatever." I'm like, "That's not what it's about." Mm-hmm. It's it's a great example of like when you care about something so deeply, you will push past the physical barriers, the physical pain, the challenges, and still get it done. Mm-hmm. You know, you found that that beauty to rescue the, exactly. somebody outside yourself. The, the beauty to rescue, and I'm like, like, like I'm, I'm not trying to get emotional just thinking about it, but when I when I when I when the letter plays in my head, I think about like man, I would. The, the violent things I would do to people if that ever came upon my family, God forbid. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't even know who this girl is. There was no picture of her. It was just her words and her letter. But she just kind of, you know, she did, she wrote about her experience and it just like tugged at my heart. Being a girl dad especially. Yeah. Like, I was like, fuck yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm moving. I'm like, mm, yeah. this is the battle to fight. This is yeah. the adventure to go for. And I'm like, Literally, and that that day too, like I was already achy. I'm like, oh yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna work out today, bro. I'm hurting. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, man, I, same thing. The event. I'm like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, this is kind of crazy. Then that video. I'm like, oh, we're gonna do this event. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. All over again. You get inspired. Absolutely. But it's you. You got. It's that battle. It's that adventure. It's that beauty to rescue. Yeah. And uh, it was just so so timely. And that is one of going back to your questions. How do I feel? Like I'm aligned with God. Is those moments where my strength is weak, when my body is physically broken and hurting, He gives me that 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 strength when i am weak he is he's made me strong Mm -hmm. and in that moment i was like this is where i'm supposed to be because these moments where i feel like i don't know how i'm gonna do this i don't know how i'm gonna do this but it's like dude it's not on me it's on him yeah you know and i'm like okay let's go that reminds me of an amazing quote i wrote it down somewhere and it said whether we succeed or fail we're exactly where we are supposed to be Mm -hmm. and we should put the right, as long as we put in the right effort and our morals are going in the right direction. And that was most of it. So the guy who said that, his name is Angelo Lilac. And I wrote that down. <laughs> and I, was I like, think I know him. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote that down and uh, re listening to Wait, did I really pod- say that? Yes. Re listening hey, to an old podcast. Can't even believe it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this man is smart. <laughs> <laughs> this knows the whole thing. I'm like, this aligns with everything that you've always been about and you don't realize it. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, I remember reading it over and over. I'm like, we have to realize that we're exactly where we're supposed to be. Hmm. Oh, bro, that's a trip. And then uh, choosing uh, where we put our efforts and energy and doing it in a moral way, you mm-hmm. know, is very important as well. And I think that's where people will make the wrong choices is, you know, that, that moral, ethical portion of it is different in everyone's head. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That's why the standard is biblical. Yeah, you which know. is great. That's but... Um, yeah, putting in the effort is something someone will not do as well or choose not to. So, 
but mm. know that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And I have to tell myself that a lot. Mm. But that's a good wow. quote. That is. Yeah, that, that was filthy, man. I like that. Yeah. yeah, because even in the failures, man, there's a lot of successes that come from it as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you said it just like that. Damn, I was like, yo, who's this guy? Who is this? <laughs> mm, yeah. Man. 50 points. 50 yeah. points a hit. <laughs> no, I appreciate you, gentlemen. This was such a great topic, man. Like, I can't even put this into one thing. Mm-hmm. We went, at first, I'm like, the title mm-hmm. of this is going to be called Bunker Hill. <laughs> 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 um, but there's so many things that we talked about today, and I am just excited to edit this up, cut this up, share it with the world, because there's a lot of people, a lot of men that are going to benefit from these conversations. Mm. These honest and open conversations of where we are in our walks of life how we think how we process you know the 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 check boxes that go off in our mind before we make decisions Mm. and i'm not saying we're perfect but at least we give people an idea of how are other men doing life Mm. and this is what it's about coming together because i can do i can fight my battle but then we really start to make the impact when we're able to fight as a unit Mm. and that's what we're trying to do is build this camaraderie and take it to the next level. So mm. I appreciate Great. you guys. Thank you guys for sharing. We'll see y'all next week. Redwood out. Peace. <laughs>